Hello my darlings and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make sigils with three different methods and talk about three different ways to use sigils. Let's do some magical crafting. Sigil's power comes from the energy and intention behind them. Your intention and will is what causes them to blossom into manifestation. The symbolic nature of a sigil also helps bypass the rational, skeptical part of your brain and allows the symbol to enter the unconscious where possibilities are endless. However, sigils are not a replacement for action. You must still do the work to make your desires a reality. The first method of creating a sigil uses a witch's wheel. A witch's wheel is three concentric circles separated into 26 spaces by lines with a letter of the alphabet written in each space. Begin by creating one of these wheels on a sheet of paper. It's a bit complex to draw, so for the purposes of this video, I've printed out a wheel and I'm gluing it into a page in my notebook. This wheel comes from a printable sigil worksheet that I created for my patrons on Patreon. I created a series of three worksheets for use with this video. If you'd like to download a PDF of these three sigil worksheets, please visit Magical Crafting on Patreon at the link below the video. My patrons can download recipes, Book of Shadows pages, artwork, and more all provided as PDFs, and I'll continue to add new downloadable content as I do more projects on the channel. Next, I write out my intention. I attract love and abundance. Your statement should always be positive and immediate. I attract love rather than I will attract love. Your subconscious will work to manifest an outcome that is immediate. It may not work as quickly or as well when it's phrased as being in the future. Do not project wanting when you write your intention. Write, I attract love rather than I want love. Take some time to craft your intention so that you manifest exactly the right thing. Next, cross out all vowels, leaving only consonants. Consonants are the manifesting sounds. If a consonant is repeated, I use it only one time. This leaves us with T R C L V B N D. Then I go to the witch's wheel and sketch light pencil lines between each letter. You can use curved lines or straight lines. You can leave all the lines connected as I'm doing in this example, or you can connect some letters and not others to make interlocking shapes. This is where the sigil becomes a piece of art, an abstract symbol that represents and embodies your intent. You can trace the symbol as many times as you like until you get a version that you're happy with. I like to put a dot at the beginning letter and a line at the ending letter when I'm using this method to create a sigil. I love the way this sigil came out. I especially like how much it evokes the classic heart shape. I can feel love and abundance when I look at this sigil. If you've seen my other sigil videos, you may have already seen this second method of sigil making. It's one of my favorites. This method uses a grid of numbers and letters and a circle with eight sections. Again, rather than drawing the section to circle, I'm gluing one from my printable worksheet into my notebook. The circle from my worksheet has eight sections spaced slightly apart. I number each section in order because that's pleasant to me, but if you make your own shape, you can choose a random number pattern if you prefer that. 
Next, I create a number and letter matrix. You can choose any number across. In this example, I've chosen eight. Then I fill in the alphabet from left to right. Next, I write out my intention. I attract love and abundance. Once again, I cross out all vowels, leaving only consonants, the manifesting sounds. And if a consonant is repeated, I use it only one time. This leaves us with T, R, C, L, V, B, and D. I then go to the original number matrix and I assign a number to each letter. I get 4, 2, 3, 4, 6, 2, 6, 4. And here's where the sigil comes to life. I take these numbers and I bring them into the shape. Tracing lightly with a pencil, I place a point on each number in the order the numbers appear and draw curved lines in between. I notice that this sigil will use the number 4 three times, so I try to vary where that point is each time. When I trace out the sigil, I vary the line positions so that it feels more symmetrical. This is just a personal preference of mine. Everyone's sigils will be unique as each person uses their intuition and personal style to create them. I love that this completed sigil looks a little bit like the Degas and Othala runes bound together, representing abundance and prosperity. The third method for creating a sigil does not have any number or letter charts or tables. This method uses the shapes of the letters themselves to create the sigil. For the third time, I write out my intention. I attract love and abundance. And I cross out all vowels and repeating consonants. This leaves us with T R C L. B, B, and D. Now I take some time to look at the letters I have to work with, thinking about their shapes and how they might come together as a graphic symbol. I begin with the letter B and draw it sideways on the paper. I chose the letter B because I see the letter D and the letter C can be traced within it. Next, I add the letter T, using the side of the B as the top. I notice this also creates the letter L. I realize that the letter R can be created by tracing part of the letter B and adding a line. Next comes the letter N, which gives me an angled line, which I then use for the letter V. I could stop there, and the symbol could be my completed sigil. But I decided to get creative with the shapes and add curved lines where each straight line is. By loosening up the line structure while still preserving the integrity of the original shapes, I ended up with a very pretty sigil 
reminiscent of a heart. I love the way this sigil comes out. I can envision love and abundance when I look at it. You can create a sigil in any way that feels best to you, straight lines or curved, all one shape or several different interlocking shapes. Use your intuition and keep working until you get a sigil that speaks to your heart. Every sigil will come out looking different. This is what makes them unique to each individual. One way to use a sigil is to draw it on a piece of paper or create artwork out of it and keep it in your home to remind you of your intent on a daily basis. Or put it on your altar to visualize and work on your intention when you're there. This is a permanent or a semi-permanent sigil. A second way to use a sigil is to draw it on a piece of paper and charge it with energy and burn it to ignite that intention or carve it into a candle and allow it to burn down to release the intent into the universe to work for you. This is a consumable sigil as it is consumed and released during spell work. A third way to use a sigil is sometimes called the forgetting method. After you've created your sigil, put it somewhere in your home where you can't see it, behind a mirror, between the pages of a book, or in a box in a closet. The idea is to forget it entirely. This helps you detach from the original longing or desire associated with the intention of the sigil. You see, if you continue to dwell on the problem after creating the sigil, your longing and worry may interfere with its manifestation. Instead, release the sigil to the universe and get on with your daily work of making a better life. By letting go, you open yourself up to miraculous possibilities and manifestation. Let me know which sigil you like best and which sigil creation method speaks to you the most in the comments below.